Well, it's about this uh, duo taking on this team as well and just seeing how well, as you say, the Europeans gel out there. Obviously, a first time for them, but a first time also for Jack Sock and, and Kevin Anderson as well. So that's going to be fascinating as, to see what goes on. Obviously, he is going to be the team leader out there. You asked me who was going to be the team leader on the European one, and I sort of hedged my bets, but not here. This is the guy that is going to know about how to win this particular doubles match. Uh, he's uh, spent a lot of time in Kansas City. He has moved around a little bit. A couple of years ago, went back home to Kansas. He uh, works out of there with Mike Wolf. And here's a guy that's uh, back home, of course, uh, went to university in Illinois. That's really where he plied his trade. Of course, Craig Tiley, now the uh, sort of CEO of Tennis Australia, was his coach. And uh, Kevin will try and help Jack out tonight. Okay, let's go down to Robbie Koenig. He's with John McEnroe. John, we're in a sticky position here. Your team uh, is down three points. What is the, the message to, to Jack and Kevin? Don't lose. We need a win, but, you know, we're playing a couple guys that aren't bad. So uh, we knew it was going to be tough going in. We've been a little unlucky. We could have won at least two of those matches. Uh, we had our chances. But you got to give them credit. They uh, they did it when they needed to. But this is going to be interesting either way. But uh, we definitely could use a win right now. Now listen, you're one of those guys who's been top of the singles and doubles ranking. How do you give advice against these two guys on the other side of the court who are at the, the peak of their powers? Well, I would always love to play, you know, the best of the best. And they haven't had a lot of experience, obviously, together. So I would go up the middle a lot. You know, Jack's the best doubles player in the world. He's, he's going to guide Kevin a little bit. But... It's going to be tough, but I'm looking forward to it. So are we, John. Thanks very much for your you time. It, well, it looks like there's a little bit of pressure on Team World there. Mark, they need to score a point today. They don't want to uh, go down 4-0 on day one. No, they got the doubles uh, in Prague, and it was uh, pivotal to them in terms of giving them a, a big chance. John Blum in the chair for this one, but uh, all eyes will be on this pairing of Novak and Roger, of course. Well, and we're just moments away for match four to start here. It's Roger Federer teaming up for the very first time with Novak Djokovic, and they're facing Kevin Anderson and Jack Sock. And we are going to join our commentators now, Sam Smith and Todd Woodbridge. Well, part of the brief of this Labour Cup is to bring so many generations together. And Todd, uh, sitting alongside me, can you imagine J Jimmy Connors and John McEnroe playing doubles together well, in, in back in the 80s at the peak of their powers? Well, I, d I do remember stories of uh, Jimmy Connors playing with Ilya Nastasi, and it was uh, explosive. Um, but, uh, you know, to have these two together is, is truly a joy for their fans because let's remember a lot of the fans the fed fans and the oh. nole fans they don't get along so they're going to have to get along as they go out there and play for team europe how do, i mean we've talked and there's been talked about extensively jack sock is the best player on court uh, how do you think he will manage kevin anderson out there who would have played an awful lot of doubles in college tennis where he was you know not yeah. far from here for all those years i mean that's that's his backstory well, college it, player turned grand slam that's, contender that's a very good point you make i mean uh, Ke kevin doesn't play a lot of uh, doubles tour events but he has played a lot so what his job is to do is to hold serve well make as many turns returns as he's, as he can be the solid player in the partnership and then let the flair and the dynamics of Jack Sock come through because that's what he's all about ripping forehands his big kicking serve and obviously he's got good quick hands he's been playing a lot of matches two majors in a row and that's a that's a real feat um, you know, Johnny Mack just called him the best doubles player in the world. Well, Mike Bryan might not like that because he's actually ranked number one. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he's leading in titles. He's leading in Grand Slams uh, ever. So, you know, um, but, but that's how this duo need to go about it. They, they need to have a strategy uh, of holding serve, putting pressure on Team Europe serve. If there was one serve you think you might break, surprisingly, it might be Roger because you you're only as good as your net man in doubles and there's the potential that if there's hesitation from Novak you might pick up a couple of loose volleys. Well the Labour Cup always has the ability to spring surprises we didn't think we'd see Versus Novak and Roger Roger's so Roger's early Roger's in the Roger's Labour Roger's Cup three days but they're here tonight and they have a very tough assignment. Team Europe to get this Labour. final match of day one underway. 
issue with breaking Roger, though, is he has one of the most accurate <laughs> serves. I mean, he has that ability to hit lines and just inside lines, so you don't get a, a, a lot of clean hits on the return. It's about just getting it back into court. So, when John McEnroe was talking to Robbie Coney, he said, I'd be playing a lot of balls down the middle. And there was a, an example there of Novak Djokovic just sort of leaving some space and making Federer have to come up with the pickup. <laughs> Federer facing the man that beat him in the dramatic five set win at Wimbledon just back in the English summer. How long does it take to get used to playing with your partner when it's the first time? Oh, it, can, it can take several tournaments to really <laughs> gel well. They've got two sets and a, a ten point match tie break. <laughs> Federer, who has won 98 singles titles, but uh, eight in doubles. And it's really been a long time since he's played on the tour. Uh, even though then he only used to play a few tournaments a year just to tune up and he hasn't actually taken to the doubles court since he was with Rafa 12 months ago in Prague. Good start for Team Europe. Federer has only played 10 events this year. This will be his 11th and hasn't played any, any tournaments uh, in doubles on, to on the tour. Well, we s he spent a lot of time on the bike today, hasn't he, David Goffin? How well he played against Diego Schwartzman. Had his ups and downs, Todd, um, but he was uh, seemed to be pretty buoyant in the, the post-match interview with you. Well, one of his great skills uh, is his temperament, and when he was going astray there with his forehand for a little while, didn't bother him at all. He just stayed on, on task, and you know, from two match points down, that, was a, I mean, that, that could be pivotal throughout this weekend, that match now. Yeah, we could very easily look back, couldn't we, to uh, that matchup. Oh! Very long three days, four matches tomorrow, three singles and a doubles. And, uh, well, what we'll get on Sunday, we'll certainly get two matches. talked a lot about Todd how Team World will take on Team Europe, but uh, flip that around, what will Federer and Djokovic look to do out here? Well, the first return there that Federer got was very smart, was a backhand chip. Uh, Kevin Anderson isn't the greatest serve volleyer. He's a very good volleyer, but serve volleying is difficult for him because it's hard for him to get in in time to, to get a solid vo volley. So we already saw him on the first second serve stand back. I think that if he misses a lot of first serves will become a problem for him. is he doesn't miss a lot of first serves it's a big weapon obviously with his height ironically the last time that Kevin Anderson was on a doubles court he was with Novak Djokovic in Toronto they actually made it through to the quarterfinals got very much the sense I chatted to him earlier that he was really looking forward to this and enjoying his Labour Cup debut Federer and 
I'm a big advocate that early on in a match that you take the return straight down the line, particularly when you're playing somebody like Jack Sock, who we, you know is going to be influential around the net. He's going to be searching for the ball. If you go up the line early, he's already in his mind that he needs to stay home and be careful. Yeah. You've heard it from Jack Salt, good serve, Kevin, and uh, doing what you say is most important, just holding that game. First time we've seen Djokovic since he won at the US Open just over a no, week no, or so no, ago. Great start for Team Europe, team Europe uh, with a win for Dimitrov over TFO, then Edmund taking out Sock and then Goffin de defeating Diego Schwartzman. What an ex that was with the exciting match, R such an exciting match of the day. Just edging out a couple of match time breakers. We had a lot of those last year as well in Prague. Oh yes, there's the one down the line. So that automatically Roger's gonna be nervous about taking too many risks. Love it. The issue for Novak is, does he serve volley, does he stay back? And it changes the rhythm on his serve because he's not used to serve volleying all that much. And that first serve on that previous point, the ball toss a long way forward, so it drags it down into the net. So big chance here. Novak telling Roger where he wants to serve in the I formation. <laughs> a little wry smile from Novak there. That, that was a pretty well That's struck return. Way. Really quick hands. Look, just racket out in front. Wonderful racket work to control that little angle. No big swings from Roger. We've seen Djokovic on tour a little on the doubles court this year. Uh, played in Miami with uh, fellow serve Victor Troiki, played at Queens with Stanislav Vavrinka, and then as I mentioned, had a nice little run with Anderson in Toronto just back, uh, what, a month or so ago.
That's an icebreaker if ever I've seen one. <laughs> that goes around the world. <laughs> <laughs> he's in trouble. Juice. And he's got to work a little harder for this service game as well. Back to Juice. What's been, so, what's been absolutely lovely throughout uh, this first day, we've seen them sitting side by side on, on the players' bench, haven't we? Just chatting away. But they've never actually spent this much time together before. Well, certainly not off court, anyway. Oh! <laughs> that was more than a touch, touch, touch. That was a big body blow. <laughs> Was this such a good idea <laughs> after all? So this is the forehand hit at 105 miles per hour, bang on the chest of Novak Djokovic. as quick as you can you should be getting to net as the duo you could see Jack Sock he got in as quick as he could but Kevin just hanging back for too long and Federer coming through and we're on serve at early stages of this opening set. <laughs> Roger and Novak having an awful lot to discuss at the change events, very much Jack comparing Sox. bruises and Team Novak Sox. mentioning just uh, he thought his heart might stop for a second or two there. I think he's had rather a fright, the Nets are the last man in the rotation to serve America's Jack Sock. Currently ranked at two in the world behind the right-handed Brian Mike. As they've just come off the US Open, but three titles, three Grand Slams to his name. He is the Grand Slam doubles champion at Wimbledon as well with Mike Bryan. And don't forget, four years ago, he won with Vaslak Posipit. I, I can never say this name. Come on, Todd, help me out here. Vaslak Posipit. Oh, thank you. Too many P's and S's in there. But he's always been a wonderful That's doubles player, even when he first came onto the tour. I mean, he's got 13 titles. He's always played both tours. And I'd like to hear from you in just a moment what makes him so good out there. He's so good, Todd. Well, he goes after the ball. He's not afraid to go forward. And the one thing in doubles, we've already seen um, Novak get hit and Kevin Anderson holding his ground well here, but he's starting to back away. If you back away in doubles, it's a sure thing that you'll end up being tagged, as we call it. It's the, he, he serves very well. He positions the ball nice. He doesn't necessarily go for aces. It's where he hits it in the box. So in doubles, the other thing that you need to do is to make your partner look good. If you're a good doubles player, you're setting up your partner the whole time. It's not about how, how, you, how you play. It's not a one-man shot sort of deal. Jack is always setting up his partner nicely. Good. 
And a very comfortable service game for Jack Sogg. We also won Olympic gold in the mixed doubles uh, in 2016 back in Rio. And uh, he has actually qualified for the tour, the tour finals in November in London with Mike Bryan. The only problem is that Mike has also qualified with Bob, who's been out injured. So Mike has got a very difficult decision to make. <laughs> an almost impossible Gee, choice. A, what an impressive performance to have done that with two partners. Really good way for Roger to just ease himself into this uh, three-day Labour Cup event. He's been enormously busy this week. And we've been wondering throughout the day just how he does it. Where does he find the energy to do all the promotion? Everyone wants to speak to Roger. He's out there with the fans, the sponsors, the businessmen. And at some point, he's got to find a chance. He's got to have a little chance to practice as well. Looking really comfortable here. Love yeah. hold for yeah. Federer, yeah. and we remain on serve early stages of the second yeah. 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 Full house tonight at the United Centre, and we are about a 15-minute drive west of downtown in this sporting city. The Wrigley's, Wrigley's Field, which is uh, the home of the Chicago Cubs, the baseball team, to the north and the home of the White Sox to the south. An example there where I mentioned in the last service game of Kevin Anderson where he struggles Lovely. to serve and volley. In singles, he likes to serve, get the shorter ball and then approach to get to net. And you can see here he doesn't make it to the service line and it's a ripping return, mind you. That service coming down from six foot eight, two meters three. There's a man over the last about 18 months been working pretty seriously with a sports psychologist, and what a difference it's made to him. Finalist at the US Open last year, at Wimbledon in 2018. this court Jack Sock at 25 years of age uh, he's the he's the baby on the court isn't he Federer at 37 Djokovic early 30s Anderson uh, in the same bracket and I saw a stat today which uh, I was very surprised about average age of the men's top 10 29 years and six months pretty similar to the men's top 10 on the PGA tour and the golf tour So Sasha Zerov at 21 and Carl Edman at 23 and young Francis Tierfo, plenty of time. You throw Nick Kyrgios into that. Yep. How old is Nick? 23. Okay. Just young pups, aren't they? Yeah. 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 Taking care of his service game. Why doesn't Novak Djokovic seven volley? He's a four-time Wimbledon champion. Why can't? Why hasn't he got the facility to do that? Well, he just hasn't uh, put that into his game, has he? The grass courts these days, when they've changed them to make them uh, uh, bounce that mm -hmm. little bit higher, and, and doesn't need to. Doesn't need to. He's able to counter punch from the baseline. He's. Obviously, he's, he's been serving very well. 
throughout his career, he's had a patch where it did go off for a little while, but his service motion isn't a natural motion that draws you forward and into the court either. So it, it's not as fluid for him to naturally flow in. Let's see if they, can, if they can get through this service game without uh, crush helmets being sent out there or body armor. It's all got to do with the ball toss. If you are going to serve Oli, you actually put the ball toss just a little bit more forward because it gets you leaning into the court. His ball toss is well back because he likes to put more shape on it. And if you pull it back, then you haven't got that forward trajectory that's taking you forward into it. You can see even right there, when he lands, he, he lands almost falling left and then has to take the next step forward into the court. So if you can get another look at it here, it, it's, it's not a natural motion that he's taking you forward. Oh, beautifully timed intercept from Federer. Talk us through this because I'm sure we're going to get a replay. When exactly do you make your move? Well, see, he's, he's already on his way now. Look at the angle that he takes. He's further back in the box and he cuts it off by coming forward, racket out in front. And it's just a natural instinct of following the ball. Yeah. yeah. Senior. All great move from uh, Djokovic. Europe Still on two. serve in this opening set. Team Europe leading 4 3. Early evening in Chicago. It's actually a pretty warm and windy day outside, but uh, tucked up inside the United Center with, I would say, well in excess of 17,000 fans here. They squeeze a few more in for the NBA basketball when the balls take to this particular court. They also have a special surface that they just flip on uh, the, the ice hockey rink. Uh, it's extraordinary how they do it. It really is. New balls. You were such a night owl, Sam. Yeah, Coming in at all hours of the morning, yeah, 10 o'clock, I wouldn't have called quite early no, evening. But I, I have to say, I've completely <laughs> lost track of time. <laughs> it's been, uh, that's how the day's been here. It's gone so quick. The service game going quickly too. Same format tomorrow, three singles to get us underway. And a doubles. And this double's vital for Team World. Yeah. What is going to separate these two teams in this first set? I think it's going to be some quick exchanges at the net. There'll be one point of re reflex bowling that uh, someone either gets an advantage from or someone gets tentative with. And so there's the winning of the point or the losing, and whoever actually wins it, that's going to separate that. It comes down to something as simple as a quick volley exchange. It's been so tight today, hasn't it? And I uh, saw John McEnroe straight after... Uh, the last singles match, he's like, oh, we really could have done with that one. We needed that just to pull some of this momentum back. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Surprised me, his feather is using a different racket, isn't it, for the yeah, World Cup? Yeah, it's a, a special edition, the headquarters of Wilson, obviously, uh, here in Chicago. He was there doing some 
Sponsor activation meeting the employees just a couple of days ago. And they created a, a frame and color that would look bright on this particular black court, this unique court. And then after this tournament, he will go back to his regular frame, which is in fact black. Got to say, that's not as easy as you think. Didn't have a lot of space to go with on that volley, Federer. So the decision to drop volley was smart because he went to Kevin Anderson. The bigger man isn't the fastest of the two in Team World. Very surprised Team World are not challenging that particular serve. But very solid again from Federer. And, uh, well, we're still on serve. doubles for Team World to try and stop the momentum of Team Europe who have had such a good day so far. He looks pretty happy with himself, yeah, doesn't he? That's about as animated as we've seen him. Great win over Diego Schwartzman. Wonderful to see this United Centre fan crowd. They were on their feet for much of that match. Can it Djokovic and Federer make it a perfect 4-0 start? That's what Gorg uh, was so very much hoping for. And the, uh, as we opened up the day here. <laughs> Not a single break point uh, opportunity created as yet. Phenomenal numbers behind their first serve. Only three points have been lost behind both teams' first serves combined. It uh, doesn't really get too much better than that. Well, there's the commentator's curse. It comes out straight away. <laughs> this was a brilliant return, though, and again, not being able to get in to make a first volley. It was behind the eight ball as soon as he had the half volley, and you could see Federer instinctively, once that ball had hit the ground, he was coming forward because he knew he was going to get something high up in the air. do very nicely Anderson uh, taking care of his part Two of the bargain ones. and that uh, we are locked once more in this Five. opening set which has been going uh, seems longer than that just over half an hour now the United Center the third largest indoor arena in the United States uh, extraordinary it is and I was out there actually uh, when it was the early evening so many fans uh, in the in the zone to which have been to the right of your picture um, a lot of security to go through as well to get in, but well worth it. And uh, everyone absolutely fully invested in this doubles. Oh, yes. Point of the match. And I said it would come down to some reflex volleys, and there were quite a few there. 
The end of this point beautifully read by Novak Djokovic. This was a clever shot. This one here from Jack Sock. Just trying to keep it down low, but the movement and racket head control of Djokovic up to the task. So we talked about, you know, who would lead the combination. It was interesting there, the communication from Federer. He's calling to Novak, out, leave it. That's what a, a, a seasoned doubles player would normally do. Oh, you forget actually some of the titles that he has won. Actually, his first one came uh, way back at, at the start of his career in 2001. Won it with your old partner, Jonas Bjorkman. Won in uh, Rotterdam. Also won that year in Gestad with Marat Safin. That must have been uh, a, pr a pretty entertaining <laughs> week. He loves his doubles, does Federer. These two teams playing in a great spirit here, and we remain on serve in this opening set. Federer and Djokovic moving ahead once more. They didn't know what to expect the first time we were ever seeing Federer and Djokovic on the same side of the court. It has been very entertaining. They look like they're enjoying themselves, and it's been super competitive as well. Great to see Merka, his wife here, former player herself. Chris Novak is actually here as well today, which is great. Pretty much every single service game has been won very comfortably, <coughs> just apart from that third game um, and Novak Djokovic's opening service game where he had a, a little bit of a battle and a few bruises. there from Jack Sock to keep himself in the point. He got himself out of position here. Look, he's deep in there and just really good hands just to create that angle to keep it away from Federer. Well, that play won me a few titles. I've got to say, and it's not used a lot these days, the single-handed chip lob, and Federer just played it to perfection, took the net away from the opposition, got in, put pressure on, Jack Sock not able to come up. So we've seen two perfect returns from Federer, the chip off, no pace cross court, and then the chip lob over the net man, and that's got to be a good lob to get over <laughs> Anderson, let me tell you. He wanted to get involved and, and hesitated slightly. That time, though, <laughs> way to use your height and, and wingspan at the same time. First time Sock has been under any pressure on his service game.
when you get points like this, this is so entertaining. Great defense from Team oh, Europe. from last year and what a great camera angle he's, it, it's sort of self-defense he gets the higher ball gets out after it and as we suspected even though Kevin Anderson doesn't play a lot of doubles on the tour he knows his way around a doubles court from all those years in college Opportunity. You don't get many second serves against Roger. Well, in singles, Federer wins more tie breaks and has won more tie breaks than any other player currently out there. Over 400 in his career. It's been great watching Djokovic over the last couple of days. He's finally. Re you just sense he's getting into this. The competitive juices have suddenly kicked in. That's probably a little bit of a let off for the world there. Federer got a second chance. Able to control it. Look at that. It's a shoulder bump from Federer to Djokovic. that end up winning the point. I would love to have seen the two of them go in together because the longer they stay back, I think that's a, a troubling spot for, for Kevin Anderson in this match. He's got such a, a big wingspan. He's pressure at the net. Second serve, Sam. There's an indication of that there. It was a wonderfully Two struck more. deep return. And look at the movement from Sock. How quickly things can change early, down a very early mini break in this second set tie break. And now have the slight advantage here. Oh, how much Team World needs something to go their way. And uh, this is the man they're looking to, Jack Sock. But Kevin Anderson has been very good out here by his side. Oh, well done. Man. 
<laughs> He's proud of himself <laughs> too. It wasn't quite as clean as we originally thought. <laughs> oh, he's lovely, isn't he? Some real young ones out there yeah. on the corner. What an experience say. for them. You know, we haven't had a, a professional event here of this caliber anyway in 27 years. And many young talent tennis players who go on to great things are, are ball kids early in their career. I was one. Actually, ball boy for Tom McEnroe. Did you? I did. How old were you then? I was around about nine, I think. Nine or ten. Yep. most famous ball kid of all, Roger Federer. He's the ball kid at the Basel tournament that he has now gone on to win so on so many occasions. so low to the net he really had to oh. take caution he controlled the ball with great depth watch here how low which is his better side on on the volley i think his backhand actually is, is probably more sound but over the years he's become a very good volley at Timo, right side the side ball's moving in singles these days he, he comes up with some pretty clutch stuff I'm pretty sure they've got this one Federer already flicking the ball down the other end of the court the tightest of opening sets uh, a break point uh, not created they've had to go to the breakout the thing about the eye formation you don't see Novak miss many returns but because Jack Sock was down in there and then he comes up and decides which way he's going to go it's already premeditated where he is going but it's enough to take your eye off the ball and that gets that miss and that's the reason you'll see that played uh, this move played so much they're going for it again here Just stab the racket at it and keep the ball in play. There's nothing wrong with that special edition racket that he's using <laughs> just for this event. Only a paint job, Todd. Yeah. So very hard to split up these two scratch doubles teams. Djokovic a chance to give Team Europe a one-set lead. minute opening set and top 
teamwork just coming up a little short oh, in the end. Again. Let's go, yeah. <laughs> in the well, there was a player that stood out in those last amazing, couple of right? points, wasn't it? There was Roger you Federer. Yeah, you know, the ability that he has, and there was that stab return. Kevin Anderson making an unforced error. And then in this uh, last point, these are some of the first set highlights. Um, plenty of good rallies and lots of quick hands. And it was the sharpness of net of Federer that stood out for Team Europe for me, Sam. Yes, it was, but you can see all the highlights you want. But, you know, the only story coming out of this doubles is the fact that Novak Djokovic managed to hit his partner, <laughs> Roger Federer, ju ju just above the derriere, let's put it like that. <laughs> yeah, great play. two working extremely well together <laughs> they've really loosened up haven't they over the last 50 minutes or so a lot of shoulder bumping yes uh, between the uh, two <laughs> multiple multiple grand slam singles champions 34 between the two of them how can team world respond Well, at the top of the match here, we talked about what's going to be the difference, and we said team will can get to hang on to their serve get themselves to tie breaks they got the chance what well, was almost the case there in the first got to be more of the same here in the second exquisite isn't it in all things that he's done over his career <laughs> even the way he intercepts he knew this was a good return so you, you watch him see what Anderson's gonna do as soon as he was in a position he then took off and he cuts the angle off it's beautiful to watch talked about how we really expected coming onto this court that it would be Jack Salt that would be the dominant figure but in the end it, it's actually been Federer and Roger just looks like he's really starting to enjoy himself now don't forget he hasn't played a competitive doubles in 12 months since it was Rafa rather than Novak by his side Team World. Yeah. Team World. 
First Good job, sis. Thank you, Kenny. It's an incredible uh, body of uh, work, isn't it? And actually, I'm surprised that Djokovic has actually earned more career prize money than Federer. That certainly surprises me. And at 31, is it, do you think it's still possible for him to overtake? Oh, very much so. <coughs> These next couple of years will determine whether he does, but let's say he's won the last two. If he wins two more next year and Roger doesn't and uh, he edges closer, I think he's still got five more in him do you really? at this point. I if he's able to maintain his health, I mean, he's obviously... You know, he went away. Novak, you're talking about. Novak, yeah. yeah, if he, if he can. Don't forget this time last year. Don't forget he shut down after losing mm -hmm. in the quarterfinals at Wimbledon. Um, he was back home nursing his elbow. Here he is. Uh. Okay, so let's. Uh, we d you ask a question no, about how you. Team World are going to get back yeah. uh, into this. Well, one of the things that they're going to have to do is attack Novak. <laughs> We've just talked about him winning more majors, but in this particular format. He's the weaker link. And what you've got to do is try to take Roger Federer out of it. So every opportunity the ball is directed to him, particularly if he's at net. This is pure reflex. Just keeps his racket out in front, which gives him the opportunity to shovel it back over with the two hands. Well, when you see him serve it as he has done tonight and, and certainly over the last few months, I think very much justified in having elbow surgery. When was it back in April after Indian Wells in Miami? It wasn't, it wasn't a big operation, but uh, it's certainly done the trick. But here's something we've had to wait almost an hour for the first break points of this doubles match. Turning at 91 miles an hour. Still hope for Team World here. They might just pinch a point, you never know. Hmm. You're actually just having to be cautious there yeah, to wait good. for the ball to actually get over the net. You can't lean and hit it before it's come over your side. It has to have crossed. It's always a really confusing rule, actually, for yep. I mean, many club players, and uh, I think there's a few pros, actually, that are not 100% on that one. Well, you can, it can bounce on your side with backspin and be going back over the net, and you can lean and over and, and hit lean. it, but you can't yeah. hit it okay. before it actually crosses into your portion of the court. Yes. from 1540 and he really swung into action but, uh, the former Olympic champion don't forget back in Beijing winning with Favrinka emotional scenes there he loves his doubles and really protecting Djokovic throughout that game Yeah, 
Well, she called fold on that correction, so the ball was clearly on the line. John Blom. So just explaining that the lines person made enough of a call that he needed to interject, and if there is a call, it's a hindrance, point replayed, but uh, as I was saying, John Blom from Australia. Just got to promote the Aussies. <laughs> Actually, it's wonderful that Team World have an Aussie in their team in Nick Kyrgios and the fact that he is the Labour Cup as a tribute to Rod Labour, who I believe is still here and he's watched an awful lot of tennis today. There we go. That works out very nicely, doesn't it? I put a couple in the chair as well. Tom Sweeney up there earlier today. This is impressive from Anderson. Oh, oh, hasn't really caught fire out here. They combined very well as a pair, though. Yeah. Team World aren't going anywhere. And uh, they nudge in front yeah, in this it. second set. 2-1 they lead. We're on to yeah, well, Team yeah, Europe yeah, have yeah. taken the first. Anderson and Sokta Ponda. There is a great man. Uh, He's still, he can watch you another couple of matches, can he, if you asked him to. I saw him in the, the Rocket Club, which is uh, pretty close to our commentary box here, just across the way. He's a very humble man, oh. but he's incredibly proud um, of this event and, uh, and, and what it's becoming. So there is what I mentioned about Love. every ball being directed in, around, or to Novak. Here's that slight hesitation at net. It's a, you can see the movement's different, and he doesn't react at all. That was his ball by a mile. <laughs> You remember the comment that I made that Federer might be the one to lose, sir, because you're only as good as your net man. And if your net man gets hesitant like that, then you're in a little bit of trouble. So here's a sniff of a chance, love 30. Make that three break point opportunities. Well, they had a couple of chances on the Novak's last service game triple break point here on Federer's there's so much support for them in this United Center they need something and there is that break they so desperately need and some light for Team World after what has been a very long day. <laughs> Be the perfect pick-me-up, wouldn't it? Well, he's one of the great commentators in the world, isn't he, uh, John McEnroe? <laughs> We've just got a little bit of it there from the side of the court. They need something to go into day two. And he was the sort of doubles player too that could just light up a match, change it within a, a, a couple of points. Still say, the greatest double combination of all time was John McEnroe and anybody. Well, rather charmingly, I believe it was Peter Fleming that said that. <laughs> <laughs> and if you know Peter, um, you'd understand why he would say that. <laughs> they only have to get this set and they can take it into a 10 point match tie break. We've already seen two today in the singles.
Team World is challenging the goal of the Rats far side. Team World have got this one right, it did catch. And it's funny, isn't it? Everything's starting to go their way now. Oh, the scoreboard has a very different look now. Team Europe may have taken the first, but it's all Team World in the second. They lead 4-1 with the break. Team World bench, very animated at the change of ends. There has been a, a real gear switch from Sock and Anderson, who are combining extremely well. Broke uh, Federer in Team Europe's last service game. Let's see what Djokovic can do here. All the momentum, though, with the men in red. It's all Federer now, though. Still trying to hang on to this second set. Well, one thing in, in doubles is momentum can switch very quickly, but you also need to stem the momentum, and it really got the way of Team World there from us. That was a very good service game from Novak Djokovic. Exactly what they needed. Now they need to try and get one of these first two points just to try and build a little bit of momentum pressure to see if they can get this break back. as well actually taught at the change of ends is that Sock was much more animated on the player bench he, he was chattering away there we didn't see that in his singles where he has lost so much confidence when I mean, doubles two slams this year oh. haven't seen the best of him yet here oh, on day know. one and uh, no doubt we'll see him play with John Isner either uh, certainly tomorrow or uh, on day three He's probably got to go at yeah. day three, doesn't he? For sure, yeah. that's a three-point day. We potentially could keep them in it. service game by Jack Sock and they are one game away from taking this final doubles into a 10-point match tiebreak for Team World but the, their player bench uh, still uh, in good spirits which is great to see tomorrow Team World will have the choice whether they go they have first pick or second pick And so I'll just very quickly take us through the format because today both captains submitted their teams completely 
com completely blind, so they didn't have any idea how the matchups would be. But as, the, as uh, it's a, a, a home side for the team world. They will have the choice whether to pick first or pick seven, second. And the advantage is always, you would think, to pick second on Sunday. Just takes a little while to get used to this format. was the one that made a little bit of a mess towards the end of the first set tie break but he's also been the one now that has made some big plays could well be it's another break point but this time it's a set point big discussions down the team your event as to where Federer is going to serve here control the volleys to keep it away from the big forehand that was a rip but this was the reaction to stay in it that volley there was beautifully placed We've broken for the second time in this set. Now, can Anderson serve it out? The effort and intensity from every player that's been out on this black court today has been out of the top draw. Exactly what we saw in Prague 12 months ago.
And a whole ton of aces from a team. Well, just that's just the fifth of this match. Is that the court? Is it just a little too slow? They hit a lot of aces. Oh, we haven't had big servers <laughs> out there. Doubles, you don't serve as many aces. It's interesting uh, because the, the players tend to stand that little bit wider so you can get a racket on the ball as opposed to singles angles. You could. You see there he's able to create that angle, yep. it lands shorter, bounces out wider, no answer there for Djokovic, whereas in singles he'd come closer in and wouldn't be able to open that one up. Let's see if they can finish here, had a set point in the previous game. Two chances to take this to a 10-point match tiebreaker. Lines been signaling unsight, unsighted because Federer was recovering in front of her. Where does Anderson serve here? Well, well as good as Novak is at getting a ball back, I, I think I think body straight at him. Take away the swing. You've got Jack Socket net. Let him do the work. Let him put it away for you. Just like that. <laughs> <laughs> Team World fighting back so well Same as they way. have done all day, and we are going to the tie break. Top, we've already seen a couple of match tie breakers uh, today. What did Team World not maybe get quite right, and what do these two need to do here? as we just take a quick look at the second set highlights. Well, there's some ripping exchanges at net, but one of the key things uh, is they've got to get off to a better start. They got so behind in these match tie breaks when, you know, they've been momentum on their side in that last one with Diego Schwarzman. He, he took a bit of pace off the ball, played a little bit safe. You can't afford to do that. Um, we just saw Jack Sock finish this set off at net, and that's what they've got to do. He's got to get involved. He's got to take a role. Kevin Anderson, was on fire in that set, much better than he was in the first, particularly off the return. They've just got to somehow hang on to what won them that set. But uh, one thing is for certain, he who hesitates in this tie break will lose. start for Team World is going to be all important to when Federer was out with Nadal on the doubles court 12 months ago in Prague taking on Sock and Sam Querrey it was a 10, foot point, 10 points to 5 win for Federer and Nadal crucial for Team World early on to get the good start but again you've got to take Federer out of it by doing that means you've got to attack Djokovic if he's at net every ball's got to go in and around him Awesome. Very few challenges out here this evening. And uh, I'm being told that the serve was long. If Kevin can get a bit of a clean swing at this, the line would look good. Team 
It's not the most demonstrative character. He's a Kevin Anderson, super hard working, very strong personality in uh, terms of you know, under that quiet exterior, super determined, and really does seem to thrive in the team environment as he did in his college years at the University of Illinois. Terrific serve, 130 miles per hour. We both looked straight at the speed gun, didn't we? And speed and accuracy, that's hard to beat, isn't it? Safe overhead from Federer and a good eye there from Djokovic. Leaving that one. Big discussion here about where to serve to Anderson. He's done well by going out wide, but you take a risk if you don't get it wide enough of getting it in the hitting zone on the forehand. So he's tried to jam him and a smart serve. Three, two, two. this match has gone on those two looking much more relaxed in each other's company it's all about winning now Engines for the first time. So unlike that first set time break here where four points win against the server, not one thus far. So no mini breaks. Federer, the only man to be broken out here. You've been somewhat of a servant in this match time. <laughs> So these are the two tough points here for Team Europe, the Federer serve. If he gets away a couple of good clean first serves, it's okay. If he has a bit of pressure of the second serve, watch out. Good, calm, under pressure. That wasn't an easy volley. A touch volley like that can be nerve-wracking. Watch here, stays nice and steady with it. Good racket head control. And you can see him nip it, which got that backspin to hold it up. See, watch here, the racket head just crisply through the ball. the third double fault we've seen tonight and they've all come from Team Europe and that little door opening now for Anderson and Sock. 
much in that tiebreak where he lost to Millman at the US Open, Federer. He said back-to-back double faults in that tiebreak. Never seen that from him throughout his career. This is a crucial one again here in a big tiebreak. Forget it's first to ten. Four. Unfortunately, it's not a score night. Everyone's got the weekend. Pretty much of all. Most people here have, and uh, everyone at staying. Full house, too. Yep. I think it qualifies as, as late evening now as, it approach, as we approach 11 o'clock local time. Trying to take Federer straight out of it. Didn't want Federer to get any sort of a, a hit on the ball. 109 out wide. demonstrating with himself for actually going at Federer. A second change of ends, just the one mini break that came on the ninth point with a, with a Federer double fault. Well, from here, it all comes down to First serves here. I think if anyone, everyone from here can get a good clean first serve in, the server will dominate. Otherwise, Beautifully down the line. Seven, six, Must say that Anderson, two, he's been a revelation tonight, and you can see why Captain McEnroe put him in for this doubles. Just got slightly caught up. I'll tell you what, there was a really good dig there too, because that return got past Federer and Djokovic had the means to be able to keep them alive with a little slice backhand. So a couple of big points coming now for Team World. Such a good forehand under pressure. He took the angles away from Team Europe there, deep through the center.
This has been some comeback by oh, Team World six. if they can close here. And it all began with Team a break World. of the Federer serve early on in that second set. Three match points for Anderson yes. and Sock. That's it. Yeah, and Team seven. World get their point on day one. Six, seven, six, three, ten, six. After losing two match tie breaks today, they finally get one through over an hour and a half. It took them to do so. Just the just the one break of serve in the match. And they can go back to their team dinner tonight with something in their pocket to go into day two. Well, look, they could have, you know, when you look at the whole day, they could have perhaps been ahead 3-1. It's been that tight, but boy, did they need that. And boy, did um, Jack Sock play well, as we expected he would. But then the match turned around when Kevin Anderson started to light it up with some ripping returns. And he, he sort of... Roger Federer's bogeyman at the moment, isn't he? Yes, he very much is. Well, look, we, we were royally entertained this evening and, and uh, into the later hours with our first look at Roger and Novak playing doubles. That's what the, the fans have so enjoyed out here. But just what we needed at the first day of the Labour Cup, a point on the board for Team World. And in just a moment, we can hear from Kevin and Jack. They're with Mark Petchy. Sam, thanks very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, firstly, what a fantastic doubles match that was. Uh, obviously, the caliber of opponents that both Kevin and Jack faced was undeniable, but an amazing match. Jack, obviously, you've been in terrific form in doubles, currently obviously winning at Wimbledon in the US Open, but the standard out there was exceptional and a huge win for Team World tonight. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, my singles year isn't going amazing, but I'm still having fun on doubles court. First time Kevin and I played, so that was an awesome experience. He's having, you know, one hell of a couple of years out there making finals of slams, playing some amazing tennis, and obviously playing in front of his home fans here. You guys were incredible today. Um, but um, yeah, obviously going up against two greats of the game. Um, I, I like my, you know, chances on the doubles court sometimes. Kevin played some sick tennis tonight. And just ha we're both happy to uh, get a point on the board for us. Looks eerily similar to last year, so hopefully we can uh, make it close again. Well, congratulations. I'm just going to ask you, Kevin. Obviously, Jack's just actually stolen my thunder there. Obviously, this is a little bit like playing at home. Can you believe you're actually here at the United Center playing in the Labor Cup? Yeah, it's fantastic. Uh, you know, I couldn't. I was so excited when I, you know, saw it was here in Chicago. You know, spent so much time here. Went to obviously University of Illinois. So the crowd support was fantastic. And uh, yeah, you know, it was a really close day of tennis. We had a couple of chances and some tuba breakers, so it was great that we were able, you know, we were able to put Team World on the board and uh, hopefully we'll be able to get some more wins tomorrow. I was going to ask you, coming out for this particular doubles, obviously Diego with a couple of match points, how was the, how was the locker room at that particular stage? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, as we've been saying, it's just getting started here. So we knew we had to come out here and play some good tennis. I mean, what a great match playing, you know, two of the best tennis players who ever played the sport. So taking them out here, um, fantastic feeling. Uh, we'll, uh, you know, end the day on a good note and hopefully, uh, you know, get off to a good start tomorrow. And Jack, any tips for us, any insights on who's going to play tomorrow for your team? Uh, not me. <laughs> Thanks very much. Good luck. Congratulations, Jack Sock, Kevin Anderson.